Howdy guys, it is so good to see all of you. Um, I'm just gonna say right off the bat that I am literally the worst at segues. So uh, we're just gonna dive right into it, that's cool. All right, cool. So uh, just to give you guys, you know, I'm to tell you what's about to happen, uh, I'm gonna share a little story, a little adventure I had yesterday morning, which ended up uh, me going to the hospital. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, I think it's a great story uh, I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, hopefully, you know, uh, you'll reflect positively to it. Hopefully, it'll, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be able to resonate with, resonate with it. It's worth your time. So I'm going to shut up and actually talk. Never mind. Okay, so uh, for those of you who don't know, I uh, am actually severely allergic to fire ants. And uh, if I get bitten, I go into anaphylaxis. Uh, so that's just kind of like, you know, setting the scene for the story. Let's, uh, so it's actually set the scene. So it's Friday morning, you know, we wake up at 5, uh, that's how early we cadets have to get up. Uh, and I'm not a morning person, but, you know, that's not important, I digress. So, you know, we're waking up, and uh, the day before game day, the Corps has a tradition where we go on this core run, you know, and so all 2,500 cadets, or however, however many there are, uh, all cadets will come together, and we'll just do, like, this 3 to 5, maybe longer, uh, mild jog around campus. We'll be singing songs, and it's a great time for camaraderie and uh, just bonding. You know, all around, you know, it's just supposed to be good fun. So we complete that run, and we make it back to the quad. Uh, and from there, um, we were going to transition. You know, we split up by units, pick a spot on the quad. Uh, we picked a patch of grass. And uh, so then we transitioned to basic calisthenics. Uh, so from there, you know, we're doing it about five minutes in. You know, I'm able to keep up. Um, and things are going pretty well. Uh, I'm, you know, we're doing push-ups, squats, sit-ups, pretty easy stuff. Uh, and then we were transitioning to flutter kicks. For those of you who don't know, you have to lie down on your back, uh, and then you just lift your legs and you alternate back and forth, and it's an ab workout. So I, you know, spring down, get on my back, and of course, with my luck, I land right on top of an ant pile. And I feel all this burning and, you know, biting, and then I just get up, look at my arm, and uh, here, I'll just show you guys. Um, also put up a picture. It's shy of a uh, hundred bites all over my left forearm. Uh, it's actually disgusting. Uh, I don't want to see it. I don't want you guys to see it for too long because it's, it's, it's disgusting. But anyways, yeah, so uh, I you know, spring up from where I am, run over to a couple of my upperclassmen, uh, let them know what's happened, and they're like, oh gosh, you know, so um, since uh, I've been bitten, you know, a few times uh, before that point, so I wasn't expecting much from it, and I kind of knew the drill. So I ran back to my room, grabbed Benadryl and my EpiPen, uh, took both of them, and uh, I think like because I was kind of, you know, uh, not very competent, not fully aware, uh, of the moment, I didn't use my EpiPen for long enough, so it didn't really help. Like, of course, it got my heart rate up, but I wasn't getting any better. I had hives breaking out all over me, getting on my face even, um, and then my throat started closing up, and I was starting to see black dots all over the place. So I ran back down, and you know, I said, "Hey guys, I think I need to call an ambulance. I need to go to the hospital." So two seniors, they come and they chill with me as uh, I'm calling the ambulance. So I'm talking to her, and I remember, you know, the whole time running through my head. Uh, don't pass out, don't pass out. I've seen it in the movies, you know, you're not supposed to pass out. So I'm talking to this operator, um, and as each, uh, you know, each second passes, it's getting harder to breathe, and things are starting to fade out. Like, uh, you know, my, my vision's getting blacker and blacker and blurrier and blurrier. Um, but yeah, so I was, you know, I was telling, you know, trying to, trying to stay awake, telling them, like, hey guys, I'm getting dizzy, very lightheaded, I'm not sure how much longer. Um, all this is happening, you know, in the moment. And finally, the ambulance pulls up about two minutes later. Uh, I mean, it felt like the longest two minutes. Um, so the ambulance pulls up, and I kid you not, as soon as it, I hit the stretcher and they put me in the ambulance, my vision was completely gone. It was pitch black. Like I was, I was kind of freaking out a little bit. Um, but yeah, like I rem you know, uh, even though I was blind at the moment, I was coherent enough to hear what was happening around me. Um, and you know, like they were calling stuff out. Uh, and I personally, I don't drink. Uh, completely honest, I don't drink. Um, but I imagine that's what being drunk is like because I could hear everything was happening. I was mostly aware, uh, but at the same time, I couldn't respond like when they were asking me questions very quickly. It took me a little longer. My speech was kind of slurred, and I was already like wheezing, trying to get air in. So all this is happening, you know, um, and my heart, my my blood pressure actually uh, was was dangerously low. Uh, I believe they said it was forty twenty. And for those of you who like me aren't very medically savvy. Uh, that's like borderline flat, um, verge of flatlining. Sorry, that that sounds weird. Borderline flatlining, uh, but it was in the verge of flatlining. Um, so you know, they were. It was pretty serious. And the, in fact, the head medic told me, had you waited, you know, a couple minutes later or a few minutes later, 
and called us, we probably wouldn't have been able to save you. And you know, that was that was uh, that was pretty freaky. Uh, but anyways, so I remember you know sitting there. Uh, I've kind of given you guys like the actual events that happened. I'll just tell you a little bit what was going on in my head. So I'm sitting there in this ambulance. You know, it's pitch black. Uh, a lot of like shoutings going on back and forth. And I just remember I'm like I feel helpless. And there was like one thought that was going through my head uh, amongst many. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, fire ants? Like, really, fire ants? Like, this is the way I'm going to go? There's so many better ways to go. Um, but yeah, also, you know, a few other thoughts that were going in my head, more importantly, um, was that, you know, I, I didn't call my family or my friends uh, that morning to tell them that I love them. Um, and I honestly, I didn't remember the last time I told them and actually spoke to them. So I was kind of like, you know, if this is it, then I'm just gone. They wouldn't have seen me. You know, they're not here right now. Uh, but also, I was, you know, uh, honestly speaking, there was a calming spirit. I think, you know, it had to be God or the Holy Spirit just, uh, just in me. And I was, for some reason, I was just relatively calm. And I remember talking to God, and I, you know, in the quietness of my heart, and I said, God, if, you know, if this is the time for me to die, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Um, but yeah, so uh, after that happens, you know, they, once the meds start kicking in, my blood pressure starts coming back, and one of the most relieving things I've ever experienced was when the, uh, so my, my, like I told you, my darkness was, uh, or my vision was completely gone. Uh, just like how they show in the movies when a character wakes up, it slowly started fading from black back into color. And that was, it was so relieving, you know, to be able to see again. It was like I was seeing for the first time, that's how it felt. Um, but yeah, the medic was kind of talking to me, uh, was telling me like all the stuff that was happening, my symptoms, and, um, so yeah, luckily I did all the stuff I was supposed to do, um, just maybe a little faster would have helped a lot. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm living and breathing right now. That's more than enough to be thankful for, you know. So uh, then after that, you know, we go to the hospital about a 15 minute drive and that pretty much uh, brings us to where we are right now. So yeah, just uh, one last thing I wanted to share with you guys, because um, I, I feel like, you know, this is too cool, too important to leave out of the story. Um, you, it's going to blow your mind, I, I promise you, it's super cool. Uh, so fasten your seatbelt. So anyways, uh, for those of you who follow me on Facebook, you have probably, you know, figured out by now that the material that I post will either tend to land in the what I hope is funny category or the profound category. First, I mean, I haven't found any middle ground between them for some reason, uh, but yeah. So uh, usually in the profound category, I'll put up quotes by uh, people, you know, my personal heroes, people who I consider uh, very influential and important and just motivating things that they said. And uh, earlier this week, on Monday, is uh, when I put up a quote by Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon, one of the greatest theologians of all time. I highly recommend you check him out. But anyways, you know, I just, I just put it up randomly, and guys, like, this is literally going to blow your mind. So uh, I'm going to pull up this picture right here. You guys can check it out. And this, I put this up, like I said, on Monday, beginning of this week, without any foreknowledge about, you know, anything that was going to happen in the next few days. Uh, and so yeah, verbatim, it says, to trust in God in the light is nothing, but trust him in the dark, that is faith. I'm going to say that one more time. To trust in God in the light is nothing, but trust him in the dark, that is faith. Like, wow. That, that's really all I can say, wow. Like, I almost fell out of my chair when I read this. Uh, I was just chilling, you know, back, getting back from the hospital uh, in my home, going through my feet, and I looked at my phone and I'm like, did I really just put that up on Monday? And because, you know, at, at the time I had no foreknowledge of what was going to happen. And I, I just put it up because I found it cool. Like, you know, it was, it was a cool quote and just randomly putting it up. But that happened to be exactly what I experienced, you know, sitting there in that ambulance going from light to dark back to light. And like it, it was it was exactly, you know, that, that whole time I was there, I was completely reliant on God. And, you know, just kind of going back to that. When, in the Christian walk, you know, when, when you're living out your life, it's so much easier to trust God when things are going well for you. But as soon as things turn south, you know, that's when you start to see what you truly believe. It'll begin to surface. You know, well, what you truly believe about God, about the world, about anything, you know, that's, that's, that's really when it's put to the test. And honestly speaking, you know, to be real, yesterday could very well have been my last day on this planet. You know, and God could have accepted me and that would have been that. But he didn't. You know, he, he said, no, I'm, I'm not done with you yet. And he, he gave me a second chance at life. And, like, I'm, I'm so thankful. You know, I'm grateful to be sitting here right now talking to you guys and being able to share this with you. Because the, the outcome could have been, you know, very different, honestly speaking. And 
you know, I don't want to waste this second chance that I have. And I certainly, you know, don't want you guys to waste the second chance that you have. Um, just, you know, from time to time, I, I just, you know, think, especially, and it came, came back to me uh, mostly today, like, God believes in us. You know, like, you guys have to understand that, you know, God believes in us. So why can't we reciprocate that? You know, that's, that's, I've always wondered that. Because he actually, he put us here for a purpose. And he's instilled us with some awesome talents and abilities he's given to each of us that he wants us to use. So if he believes in us, you know, and he's going to pave the way for us, why, 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 why do we have to be so hypocritical and not be able to reciprocate that? And I'm as much of a culprit as anyone else. But, you know, just something to think about. And this Christian life, you know, we have this opportunity to live out, to reflect, to replicate the life that Jesus Christ, God on earth, you know, came and set the example for us. He came and showed us. He says, okay, I'm God. I'm coming down amongst you, interacting with you. This is how I want you to live. This is the perfect life. And he came and he showed us by example, you know. And we have the opportunity. God has given us, plus us for the opportunity to show that to the world. There's no greater honor, no greater, you know, um, title, no greater purpose. That's, it's so incredible. I, I, <laughs> it gets me excited, you know, thinking about this. And, you know, let me stop for a second. Because I, I seriously hope, you know, that this isn't coming across like a sermon to you guys. Like, you know, I'm standing here up here in my pulpit, whacking each of you with a Bible or shoving it down your throat. You know, that's, that's the complete opposite of what I'm trying to do here. I'm, I'm just a regular 19-year-old, you know, who who's just, just has a few stories to tell, a few experiences. And I've always wanted, you know, my, my biggest challenge, my biggest goal is to be authentic with people. You know, not to be someone behind a mask. And I hope that's what's coming through. You know, I, and I'm sorry if it's not. Um, but I just want to, you know, let you guys know that this is my purpose, you know, this is what I want to do. But kind of going back to that too, you know, at the same time, even though I'm not a scholar, I, you know, I, I highly urge you guys, with the, with the limited time that I have here, you know, with, with this, the short time that I've been on this planet, I, you know, even, I've figured out, you know, I've learned that God is worth it. You know, he, he is reliable. He's my best, greatest friend, my biggest mentor, you know, and I, I love being able to commune with him. And I want that for you guys too. So, you know, don't put it off. Just just like me, you know, it, it took me, I, I almost lost my life. And it took that moment for me to figure out that I, I'm lackadaisical in my faith. And I don't want that for you guys, you know. It shouldn't be on the stretcher in an ambulance. That should not be the moment where you feel like, okay, I need to turn things around. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping guys, yeah, please, please don't waste this opportunity, you know. Go be active in your faith. Go seek God. And you will find Him. If you look hard enough, yes, he will reveal himself to you. I promise, I guarantee that. And, you know, kind of go back, don't put it off because you're not guaranteed your next breath. But, yeah, I mean, guys, like that, that, that's pretty much all I've got for you right now. Um, thank you so much, so, so much for watching. Um, I, I, you have no idea how much it means to me, you know, just to have you guys and being able to talk to you guys. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, I hope it didn't take too much of your time. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully it was positive, you know, something. Uh, I look forward to sharing more with you guys. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Thank you so much. Gigum and God bless.